Hey, Allie, wake up. Huh? Huh? Come on, get what? out of it. What? What? Get out of your fun. What? We, we got another we got another TNA pay-per-view to you. Oh god, no. Yeah! Oh Come on. fuck. Pay-per-view number six, Allie. Let's go! Number Rest six, boys. yeah. Uh, Alright, rest boys. We're back in Nashville Auditorium. That's Allie who's still very depressed. Our, our, this is Mega Fighter. Wait, we're not at Nashville Auditorium, are we? I honestly I'm not sure either. Hold on, 8-Bit Black Street is happening. Give me a second. There you go. Beep. All right. Fuck, I was, so, uh, yeah. I, I was, I wasn't here. What? <laughs> so, uh, no, I just, I needed to shut off 8-Bit Black Street. Anyway. 8-Bit Black Street, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we are said to be in Nashville, and uh, supposedly we're still doing a taping in the National Auditorium, which yeah. we've been here for the last three pay-per-views. But we're in a completely different, like, arena setup and venue. Uh, I like, would say tops. This this arena has about a thousand people in it, like top, maybe even less than that, like eight hundred. Right, it, like it looks like a fucking like a pool hall compared to like the the other place they had. You kept saying this looked like a place for like an ROH show. Yeah, just that very like there's six rows of people. And the the barricades were not not first of all unfucked with, and second of all they had like draping on them that said NWA, like you could just easily like rip it off. Yeah. And I I just I don't know, man. <laughs> this is weird. The audio setup's wrong, and they're using different cameras. The audio is terrible throughout some of the early segments. Yeah. yeah. So Ken Shamrock. Has left the park finally. By the way, there's no intro this week. It's literally no just intro. like we just start and Jeff Jarrett's hitting people with a chair and yelling and everything. I somebody comes up to Shamrock and starts trying to like big talk to him because Ken, Ken Shamrock's here now. He left yeah. the park. Yeah, he he's in the back, which is next to a bathroom. It's like a reception room almost. And someone's like trying to. I forget who it was. It was like. Try to talk up their accomplishments to Ken Shamrock, and it's like, and like we're hearing like another person talking. I guess I don't know what the hell this audio is that's playing, because I can't hear shit. Yeah. And then eventually, like Shamrock, I think he either fights off, he fights off some security, and then he goes and like bars, like he closes these doors behind him and bars the door. Yeah, he bars the doors shut. To lock the security in, even though if you, when we're in the security room later, there's two different sets of double doors. So they were trapped in a room that was locked on one side. I don't. And then he brings in his friend, Ian Harrison. Ian Harrison. Last seen in the XWF. Yep. <clears throat> this Him and his face. <laughs> him, and his, him and his face. It's like if you Have combined. I British Bulldog and Christian. Right. <laughs> right. Like, he has like a Heidenreich face almost. Or like a Sean Stasiak, maybe. Or the Sean Stasiak, yeah. The five head. But we're not on we're not on planet Stasiak. We're on planet Jared, goddammit. Uh Shamrock's like, I'm the boss tonight. I run the show. And Ian Harrison just hold this door shut for me, and then he's like, Yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll block the door. He talks like Wade Barrett. Yes. So that's very distracting. Uh, so Jarrett gets suspended by Bill Barron's, and then uh, Jarrett beats Bill Barron's with a chair. And I am just lost the entire time. I'm yes. like, what the fuck is happening? We are not given any, like, chill. We are thrown into the shit. Yeah, and everyone's going like, oh, security will stop them. Don't worry, we have security. We didn't see what just happened. Security. And, like, Flip-Flop's Ken Shamrock is back. Flip-Flop Ken Shamrock, fighting, yes. And fights, like, Jarrett. And then, like, Apollo and, like, somebody else come out to help Shamrock, I think. it was. I think it was Apollo and, like, Monty or something. Yeah, Monty Brown, probably. And then, like, R Truth and Grandmaster Sex A are here, Brian Lawler. Yeah. Oh my God, it probably was Money Brown to set up for the fucking later part. Oh, whatever. But yeah, like, we are just thrown right into the most Vince Russo writing. Yeah, and this arena's shit, and it's lit in like shit. 
And, like, there's only one light for the announce table, so, like, Ed Farrar is just not lit properly. Yeah. <laughs> but after all this madness, we finally get uh, a match with the Amazing Red versus Loki and his terrible mustache. Yeah, uh, Amazing Red comes out. He's red. He's only 20 when this came out. Apparently he had to retire due to a neck injury, which sucks, but... That does suck. Yeah, Loki didn't shave, and he's trying to do this, like, I would describe it as, like, the Mongolian mustache, where it's, like... He's definitely going for almost, like, a Fu Manchu kind of thing, but it just... Where it's, like, it's, it's, it just looks like he's got two... It looks like he just used a Sharpie and just went... <laughs> he, he made two separate mustaches. Yeah, like, there's a mustache for each side I of his wonder, lip. I wonder if people have pulled off that look, a double mustache. I don't know. I would love a guy with, like, a mustache on top of a mustache. Like, he has the Dali mustache, and then a second Dali mustache over top of it, like a pair of cat whiskers. I think somebody <laughs> has actually done something like that. Somebody's on a double handlebar. Uh, this match is decent. Yeah, just a solid ROH-style match. They kept saying that they were at a fairgrounds. I'm just trying to figure out what this fucking venue is. They say Nashville. I just don't know if it's the auditorium or not. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. But it's it's so baffling, like, the whole time. But, yeah, this is a decent enough match, you know, solid stuff. I they wish cut I had to more the, notes. They, they cut to the back, and Jeff Jarrett is yelling at Ian Harrison about, like, he calls him, like, Joe Steroids or whatever. Excuse you, Jeff. His name is Ian Steroids. Get I'm, it right. I'm, I'm Ian Steroids, actually. You cannot get past my pecs. And then Jared's like, fuck you, I'll find Ken Shamrock somewhere else. It's just, it's so... Uh, that's so just, this is just going to be the running thing for the night. He's just trying to get around Ian Harrison. Yes, the, the whole show is going around Ian, Ian Harrison. Uh, so, out come the hot shots, which I don't remember their individual names... Like Cassidy Riley and Chase Stevens, but and I can't tell you which one is which. They're busy squeezing their penis in the um in the middle of the ring with a microphone, and they're just like, "We're protruding and we're present." It's like we're pricks, we're proud, and we're protruding. Yes. And then they grab their their fake their fake stuffed like trunks. It's just, geez, why is everything dicks? Yeah. Uh, AMW comes out, and they. They're called the Rodney Dangerfields of TNA. <laughs> because they don't get respect, which is weird. Because they got hey, uh, two, four, seven. Blurp. Blurp. <laughs> so, like, they got jumped once after wrestling twice. So they are the they are the least respected tag team in this in this division. Yes. Not the Dick, not the Johnson, not the Johnsons you. who are absent <laughs> or just gone or gone. So can I just add, can I just note that Vince Russo, for a guy who who loves who loves pointing out that everyone else is gay for noting Finn Balor's abs, he seems very obsessed with penises. Yeah, because dicks are funny. God damn! I have a note on here. Uh, what's with this fucking audio? Oh, um, they were interviewing. They were interviewing A and W in the background. And James Storm has like a really fake cowboy accent of just like, hey, hey, let's go. Yeehaw, baby. Yeehaw, let's go, let him ride, woo. And like, kidding. Chris Harris just like, oh my god, dude, I gotta look, man, I'm gonna tell you the truth, and I'm, I'm shooting here. You need to stop with the cowboy shit. Cowboy shit's you not gonna to, get over. You need over. to stop with the gimmick. Your gimmick is ruining this. And you're, it's like, you're ruining this with your gimmick. <laughs> no one likes cowboy shit. <laughs> And, and James Warren's is like, give me a gee-haw now. What, what's all this about? Broncos. Woo! Ah, go Broncos! Oklahoma! He's from he's from Tennessee, but fuck it. They just treat the South as like an... Um, it's like all the an, um, same place. Like, when the fucking dubs come out and they just say Kentucky, or like wherever the fuck they are. <laughs> They're from Kentucky, yes. Just Kentucky. Not even like any city in Kentucky. <laughs> Uh, Chris, Chris says he chose like James Storm as a partner. No, you didn't. You were thrown <laughs> together at the last second. Chris and you also... wore, were wearing jeans backstage. So there's this weird loud bang while they're doing this like promo, 
and it's James Storm using his guns while Chris Harris bitches about him using his guns in a pre in an interview. Yeah. Match starts, and Mike Tanay brings up that, like, apparently, it turns out the one who the ones who had attacked Harrison Storm were the hot shots. Yes, but they weren't in the tournament for the so, tag titles, which was won by Jerry Lynn and AJ Styles, who were the in. replacements and not the hot shots. Why didn't they? Why didn't they fill in for the for yeah. Harrison Storm? You wanna you wanna know my guess? They weren't hired. Right. They weren't they, hired. They booked Storm and Harris getting attacked before they had the culprit. Yeah. And then they just decided on the hot shots because I guess making it Jerry Lynn made no sense at some point. Even I though don't they know. were turning Jerry Lynn heel. What if they Even turned though, Jerry yeah. Lynn heel to beat up America's Most Wanted and, and be the culprit and then decided it wasn't him and then switched to the hot shots? Right. But like, and then it's like, oh man, it's really impressive. They they got it like, like like doing that got them in like a match later or something against the Briscoes. Yeah, like I don't know the way they describe it. It's like, what was the point of attacking Harrison Storm? You didn't get a shot in the title tournament. You just fought the you Briscoes a, who weren't in the tournament anyway. <laughs> who weren't in the tournament anyway? And you keep grabbing your cogs. Knock it off. I thought they told him he couldn't shoot the cap gun because it wasn't going to be allowed in this this other building they're in. <laughs> but I think so. Anyway, uh, there's this weird thing where, like, J Chris Harris describes them as cap guns, and then James Storm is like, cap guns are noted. <laughs> and he, he didn't say real guns, but I thought that'd be funny. <laughs> no, these are real guns. <laughs> what? He just no! fires one and... He he fires, fires one, one. Over, fires one over Harris's shoulder, and just a bullet hits like a hits the back, and Goldilocks is like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> actual, or actual my, guns, James Storm. Is still actual, the best actual guns, James Storm. <laughs> <laughs> I got a gun. Woo! <laughs> no, no, James, put it down. Put it down. <laughs> so they try to flip the f the. They try to flip the outside padding up to do like a concrete spot, but it's not designed for that. And literally, like all the padding comes up, so he has to give up on that. He just flops back down. And it's like ah, whatever. <laughs> it's like it's just not gimmicked for this spot at all. <laughs> yeah, which I think leads credence to your idea that this might have been like an ROH thing. Well, they said they were having a crossover. What if they booked the same show on different days? Yeah. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, we we get, like, a spot to kind of end it off where I think, like... Well, they both do I remember, corners. Like, they, do, they both do corner spots where, like, one turns, uh, like, something into a Hurricane Rana and the other does it into, like, a Northern Light Suplex. Yeah. Uh, they get beaten up for winning. And, like, they go for, like, the super kick su suplex, like, German combo. They miss the first you, time. They miss the first time with the super kick. Get a little better the next time. Yeah. And then the hot shots, the hot shots lost, so they're going to beat up uh, Harrison Storm after the match. They're not, they're not AMW yet. Yes. But then they grab the cap guns. <laughs> yeah, they start hitting James Storm with his cap guns. And then Ed Ferrar's just like, that's what happens when you bring cap guns to a wrestling match. Aren't cap guns mostly like... <laughs> what? I don't know. Aren't cap guns like usually like just like kind of cheap plastic? One hurt that Sometimes much. there's replica guns that are cap guns. But they kind of crack down on those because of all the shootings that happened in the 2000s. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, after after Columbine, we kind of were a little iffy about people just carrying around replica guns. Yes, crazy thought. Uh, we get like a quick thing backstage where Ken Shamrock's kind of like dealing with a concussion from getting hit he, he's by. He's getting like, inspected with about a concussion, and he's like confused. But as soon as they say Jared, as soon as he says like, Jared, he grabs the physician and throws him against the wall. <laughs> Where's Jared? Ah! And now. And uh, after that, we get Apollo. Uh, Apollo yells at Ken Shamrock, then goes out to wrestle. 
Yes. It is Apollo versus Brian Lawler. Yeah. In what is probably the most oatmeal match I could imagine. Like, this is plain oatmeal, folks. This isn't smooth. <laughs> I'll, yeah, it isn't smooth at all. <laughs> just like plain oatmeal, it is not smooth. This match is so mediocre, I just sort of forgot about it while I was watching it. I've got, like... Like, it faded from existence. The Like, like a timeline in my head of just it burning... <laughs> <laughs> like Brian Lawler at one point rips off his gaudy necklace thing and then he later stuffs that down his pants for some reason. I don't know. Maybe he wanted to pawn it. I mean, just... There's not like a lot of like big spots in the match. It's, no. it's a functional match. It's just not exciting in the slightest. And there's then... this there's this weird botched finish where like like Lawler tries to like get out of this move that like fucking Apollo's doing. The it's like that hurricane stunner thing he does. Yeah. And he just kind of fucks up a couple times, and it looks like they're just trying to get a handhold, and he keeps slipping off. The finish comes uh, in part when Brian Lawler starts dancing on him, which is he weird. He dances on them, feel. and he dances to the crowd. He also gets kicked in the face and busts his lip open. <laughs> yeah. But because he's busy dancing to the crowd that he hates... He gets rolled up on from behind by Apollo. We, we still got that one sign that says Jerry's kid in like a in weak sharpie. He's like Jerry's kid. So like, why would you play to the crowd as a heel? You hate these people. You hate the fact that they keep chanting how you're Jerry's kid. Even though you change <laughs> your last name to Lawler, which is Jerry's name. Which is very, which makes it weird. And then you started harassing target employee Don West. Yes, he's in a he's in like a red button up. I I just started trying to think of like fucking retail stores where they have like the red button up. Welcome to Target, uh, or Costco. I don't know. Yeah, Is Costco Target red. Costco. I feel like Costco's red. Yeah. Uh, what happened after that? He uh, just attacks Don West and leaves. Yeah, he kind of harasses Don West and leaves, and then. We get to uh, the K Crush promo. He is sick of being called what other people call him, and he wants to be called the truth. He's the truth. All right, Costco is red. Occasionally, there's black ones though. So black Costco. Uh, our truth is where or the truth. Truth is wearing fucking like an Allen Iverson jersey from the 76ers. Sixers. Yeah, because they're trying to like they're trying to capitalize on the fact he got arrested. <laughs> Yeah, so this is definitely where I was, I was like, I thought we were leading into this, and it's definitely now that it's confirmed. Our truth is doing a y'all racist gimmick. Yes, uh, he's, he says that his name is now the truth, and he's had it, hey, he's had enough, and that's just sort of, like, met with anarchy chants from, like, three people next to the microphone. Three random white dudes, probably. But yeah, he's are talking about how all the black people are treated unfair, like... How people went over against Mike Tyson and Ray Lewis and Daryl Strawberry. And <laughs> I made Alan the Iverson. Mixed with Allen Iverson. And then he's just like... I, know, I remember I cracked the joke about... We, we let did me the give, New Jack quote. Let me get a shout out to OJ. <laughs> Two down. Two down. <laughs> and then he actually says, What about OJ Simpson? We like, there ah! I said it. <laughs> We fucking did it. We yes. were kidding. We were we were kidding. We were we were quoting New Jack, and then he actually fucking says it. So out comes Monty Brown, who's took an umbrage with this apparently, and he starts talking about how yeah, fine, people don't treat you fairly. Keep in mind that the white people who you work for pay you and like require you to work. It, 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 it's like, oh my god, it's the kind of like, this was written by a white guy. <laughs> you, just, you could just see like a cursive font coming up on the bottom. It was like, written by Vince Russo. It definitely has the feeling of like, you know how like they write the fontest stuff in Ruby? This feels like a, like a, like a version of that. It, it's fine tip. to call out one guy as reverse racist if the other guy's black. 
Exactly. And it's just like, it's literally just Monty Brown saying that white privilege doesn't exist. Yeah. In our truth, like, fires back, calls him an Uncle Tom. Yeah, he just calls him an Uncle Tom and hits him. And it's like, this is just so very much written by a white dude. I think, like, Monty Brown gets, like, the upper hand on him and, like, I think he beats him down a bit. Gives him power bomb. Gives him gives him the alpha bomb. And I wrote down <laughs> systemic racism racism is no longer a thing. Thanks to Monty Brown. <laughs> Thanks, Monty Brown. <laughs> Thanks, Monty he solved Brown. All of systemic racism. <laughs> written by Vince no, Russo. <laughs> written by Vince Russo. Jesus so Christ. they uh Mike Tanay announces that he has a special interview between AJ Styles and Jerry Lynn, and then we get this long recap, by the way. No, no, no. Well, we get a long recap. Now, you see, they didn't play the audio the first time around. <laughs> That's why I muted Mega Fighter. <laughs> Can he unmute himself? Hold on. Let me see if I can unmute him. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The fucking, like, like we get, like, it cuts to, and we can't hear a thing. Well, I think it was, like, really faint audio. <laughs> yes, like, they got oh the God. audio wrong, and they couldn't play the fucking segment, so they had to play it again. <laughs> the technical difficulties were so bad on this show. Now, thanks to consistent story. Uh, thanks to consistent storytelling, AJ and Jerry Lynn are being interviewed together, and they've decided that they've settled things. Yeah, this is like group therapy with Mike Tanay happening. Yeah, it's just like, you know, AJ's just like, I respect him now, and I do have to pay my dues. And Jerry Lynn's like, I, I get why this kid's, you know, so hungry. He's young. It's fine. You know, I was, I was in that same place before. And yeah, that's just dealt with. <laughs> so they're friends again? They're just friends again, and now they got a tag title match against the Flying Elvises. Jimmy Yang's back! Jimmy Yang's back. So, I think this match makes me think that they think that AJ would be the better heel. <laughs> Which is not Because true, they just pussied out of Jerry Lynn being the heel, and they, they're giving signs that AJ's going to turn heel. The Flying Elvises theme doesn't work. It's not elvis -y enough. I, are, you, are you talking about just the fact that on a technical level, it broke? Yeah. God damn it. Um, so, many, so many fucking production botches tonight. So, Sonny Siaki sits down because it's Jimmy Yang and Jorge Estrada this week. Jimmy Yang's back from All Japan, which is where he was the last few times. There might have been a trade with Anita. There might have been a trade with Anita. I'm surprised Anita was in All Japan. I mean, I guess... FMW probably folded around this so, time. So Sonny but... Siaki sits down and he takes the fat guy's headphones again. Now, I think I figured out who the fat guy sitting behind Don West is. Rock Tan? No, not Rock Tan. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think that's the audio guy. Like, I think that's the audio guy and his headset doesn't connect to the commentary. It connects to the cameraman. Or it connects to yeah, the it like, connects to the production truck. Yeah, because this is every the guy time Siaki puts on his headphones, you can't fucking hear him. <laughs> oh no, not at all. Eventually, he has to take Don West headset. He, he steals Don. It. He takes Don West headset. And Don West just has to sit there and shut up for the rest of the thing. God damn it! You couldn't have taken Ferrara's headset, Siaki. <laughs> and you know, and you would know that because any spot where Siaki gets up and interferes against AJ Styles. You can hear Don West just trying to, like, speak into the headset <laughs> that he <laughs> left behind. <laughs> there was even moments where, like, and you and you heard this, but when Sonny Siaki's talking and Don West had something to say, he had to, like, lean up and shout it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And he went, like, he's great. He's great. <laughs> I heard that yell. I was like, I thought it was a fan in the crowd. No. Yeah, Sonny Siaki has some very strong opinions about Jerry Lynn and AJ Styles. And you see, the thing is, it, you see, the thing is, Sonny Siaki is better than AJ Styles. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my god. <clears throat> yeah, they just keep trading a set, set of headphones because every time Siaki does like a run in, <laughs> it's fucking stupid. Oh my god. Uh, AJ and Yang do a do good job. Why are the Elvises not fighting the hotshots if, like... Because Siaki starts bringing up the point and Ed Ferrar agrees with him that the Elvises are underlooked. And then Mike Tanae is just quietly like, yeah, but this is a title match. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. How can you be overlooked if it's a title match? <laughs> it's so weird. Like, there's there's nothing that makes sense about any of the booking here. There's this weird spot where, like, Jerry Lynn's had enough, or it was AJ, I don't fucking remember. And, like, they go to clothesline Siaki, but they cut, and you just don't see it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was Jerry Lynn, I think. Yeah, Jerry Lynn's like, fuck you. So they do the, uh, they do the AJ's, the, you know, AJ, AJ's trying to get the hot tag, pretty much. With, uh, and Jerry Lynn's forced to watch as the, uh, as the Elvis is pretty much, like, isolate AJ Styles and beat him up. But, like, AJ will keep getting offense in and, like, almost getting a tag. It was a pretty good match. Like, AJ hits, like, a diving... He does, like, a like a springboard splash and just gets caught in, the, like, a backbreaker. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of good stuff going on here. The There's thing I remember, springboard, though... Springboard, moonsault, reverse mode. DDT. There's, like, a... Jerry Lynn gets yelled at, even though Siaki was interfering at the same time. And all, uh, and like all Siaki does, or it might have been Jorge, is they clapped to pretend they tagged in. <laughs> and the ref didn't see it, so they called it. The thing I remember the most about this is Jerry Lynn doing a fucking Muda job. So, um,. Lynn hits, like, an outside dive to the Elvises, and then he sort of, like, grabs both the Elvises because he sees AJ wants to do an outside dive. And what happens is Siaki gets up from his commentary booth and just charges everyone and tackles them out of the way. And what happens is AJ, like, lands the outside splash onto Lynn, who hits his head on the, on the, on the railing. And he just blades the shit out of his face. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, Sorry. Okay. Like it is it is like he is gushing. He's Just, bleeding everywhere, like twenty seconds crimson mask. Like we were shocked, like Jesus Christ, Jerry. So <clears throat> he's fucked up and they start double teaming AJ while he's selling outside the ring. But eventually he stops selling. Because he wants to, like, come in and interfere, but he doesn't see, because he's got blood in his eyes, that AJ's mounting a comeback. And there's this weird spot where, like, AJ's going to the top rope, and Jerry Lynn sort of hits, like, a springboard splash onto the other one to get the pin. And then AJ's just left on the top rope. <laughs> like, I didn't do my move. I didn't get to do my move. And then he's, like, he's mad at Jerry Lynn, who's hurt. And, he and then he gets, off. and then he gets beaten up, and and AJ just walks off because he's mad he couldn't do the spiral tap this week. So we're now turning AJ heel, which is the first of many and times they when they come to help heel. Jerry Lynn, the lights go out. Yep, lights out. Uh, we uh, come back, a... and it's Disco Inferno with probably the most tacky furniture I've ever seen. This hideous yellow couch with, yeah. like, a texture that looks like if you glued, like, like you just poured glue on the fucking, like, on the furniture. It's like you the... poured glue and then threw confetti on it, or, like... Or sawdust. Or, like, parts of a broom. <laughs> it is it is hideous. And he has, like, a beige lamp. <laughs> this beige lamp. Like, I said, if I had this couch in my... If I had this couch in my house, I would burn the whole house down. So he starts talking himself up about how he's like one of the top 50 sexiest wrestlers and he was in the Wolf Pack and he beat yeah, Goldberg. He like rattled off his like accomplishments. He he helped end Goldberg's streak. He was present for the end of Goldberg's streak. Yes. The uh like the fact that he's not bringing up any tangible championships he held in WCW is weird. Like, 
He was a cruiserweight champion, a one-time tag champion, a two-time television champion. These are tangibles you can bring up. So I just he's just I got so annoyed with this that I started just reciting the Cody Rhodes tweet shitting on Disco Inferno. Yeah, because all he's doing is taking a really long time to say that Ken Shamrock has no personality. Even though Ken Shamrock's personality is he threatens to hurt you and then he does. Here's, <laughs> here's Ken Shamrock's personality. Ah! Ah! That's Ken Shamrock's personality. <clears throat> I think it's fine. (laughs) He starts name dropping like talk show hosts, but it's like, why not name drop actual wrestlers like Roddy Piper and Brutus Beefcake and Paul Bear and Brother Love, you know, who are Shawn Michaels who had talk shows? No, no, he's talking about Montel Williams and fucking Jerry Springer and Oprah Winfrey. And he's going to be like, I'm coming for you, Oprah, because I'm going to have a better show than you. And it's just like, this is stupid. And keep Montel. Stay out your fucking mouth. Uh. Yeah, leave my Williams alone. Yeah, this was just a complete waste of space. This is just to announce that he's doing jive talking with Disco Inferno. Jive talking. Because if there's anyone who needed a talk show, fucking Disco Inferno. Uh, Goldilocks is in the back, and for some reason, him, like, Shamrock and Jarrett just keep missing each other because now he's back at the door where Ian Harrison is and he's like where'd, where'd Jack go and then it's like not here and then he's, he's like not here, mate. he's like fuck and then he just walks off <laughs> and then Goldilocks is left with the Dups yep oh no wait the Dups aren't oh they're yet. not here yet okay not yet no no we gotta first do Simon Diamond and Johnny Swinger versus Monty Brown and Elix Skipper Yes, um, so they put Elix Skipper and Monty Brown together for the very obvious reason. They're both in football. They're both football, <laughs> yes, they're both football guys. They're both well, football why, guys. Why else would they be put together? Why else would they, put, they, put, would they be put together? They're both football guys. One's, football guys. one's NFL, football. the other's CFL. <laughs> and fucking, fucking Mike today of all people, going like, <clears throat> like, well, C- while Ian Skipper was in the CFL, Monty Brown was in a real football league. Like, fucking Mike Canadian Kinney. football is football. <laughs> Mike Kinney shitting on the CFL is not what I expected out of this episode. Yeah, of Roman, this Reigns, you, Roman Reigns was there. <laughs> he was in the Roman CFL. Roman Reigns was in the CFL, yeah. So, yeah, that was just fucking weird. <laughs> also, they're both black, but... <laughs> but, more importantly, football guys. More importantly, not- football guys. Not, which is why I'm not upset about them being paired together like I would be with most black guy tag teams. This tag match was pretty good, honestly. This is a pretty good tag match. I don't remember super specifics, but I just remember... Johnny, like, S- Johnny Swinger's a decent hand. I don't know that much about Simon Diamond. Um, Simon has a tag partner. <laughs> Dude, that's about it. Monty Brown sure and... You more about him. Monty Brown and Elix make a good team. Elix is sort of like a technical high flyer, and like Monty's a power guy with speed. Yeah, and they have so character. They yeah, they're, they're calling Elix Skipper Prime Time now. He's got and different pants. I think, and I think he's been that for a while. And Monty Brown's the alpha male. <clears throat> now alpha Mike Prime, Tenace, <laughs> alpha Prime, Alpha Time, Ill Time. <laughs> that's not, that's, that sounds way really different. Actually, now I say it. Uh, but yeah, Mike Tanay says like there are two words that come to mind with Monty Brown, and those are alpha bomb. And I just think I don't know. I I counter that I think of one word when I think of Monty Brown. Pounce, pounce. pounce. That was such a cool gimmick. I hate the fact he retired after that. Maybe he just wasn't super interested in after, wrestling. Yeah, he retired after like ECW you, m- you mentioned. And yeah, when being a personal trainer. So they win with the alpha bomb. And yeah, they they celebrate, and I'm like, "Hey, this is a good tag team." And then out comes Truth. Yep, Truth. I like how you were saying there was going to be a run in at some point, like you were expecting it during the match, but then he just comes out afterwards. So, Elix Skipper works with Truth. With so this truth. tag team with actual chemistry, and like they're both decent work weight wise. That's just no, they're they just beat up Monty Brown. No, they just beat up Monty Brown. <laughs> It couldn't be that, like, 
Truth and Elix offer Monty Brown like to join up with them. My idea for an easy thing would be like they like him and Monty celebrate, Elix and Monty celebrate, and Truth slides into the ring. And because Monty fought Truth earlier, he's like, the fuck you want, dude. But Elix Skipper goes over to celebrate with Truth, and he's just like, we're friends, man. We're, we're all friends. Cool. And you know, why don't you just come like, over? Uh, why don't you just come over here? Like, a brother's got to watch each other's back. And then Monty's just like, fuck you. He called me an Uncle Tom. <laughs> and, and then, then and they then beat they him up. up. Yeah. Just, easy booking. That would be pretty easy booking. You would set up the feud. Um, also, it's not really a heel turn for you, Skipper. They're just friends. Yeah. Until they beat, until he beats him up, of course. Now we go to now the dubs. We get, now we go to the dubs. Where also I got swerved, bro. Whoa, yeah. I got swerved with that Monty Brown. Thing. Oh yeah, that was a swerve, bro. Wow, swerve. You were, you were thinking that Elix Skipper was going to be with Monty Brown, but that, that no, was an Isaiah. No that was an Isaiah scoop, a soup Scott, a Isaiah, <laughs> Isaiah <laughs> Swerp. <laughs> I say a Slurpy Scott, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I say a Shower Scott. <laughs> Stupid fucking joke. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, here's uh, the dups, and they're, like, tweaking to the point of, tweaking. like, until, like, Stan keeps lighting a lighter, and he's, like, got this brown shit leaking out of his mouth. Well, that, that's that's tobacco. I don't yeah. think he's actually doing heroin. Yeah, but he's time. acting like he's tweaking, because they're, they're talking, like... Man, they're talking like the, they're talking like they're like this, man. Click, 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 lighter going up. Uh, yeah. And then talk about like where's fluff, and then like somehow that gets into like some fluff weird thing is being about sexually assaulted by her uncle. Uh, yeah, where they're like, ah, Pop Dub, he like OD'd on Viagra, and all uh, the sheep and fluff were walking weird, and it's like, so, so he fucked her and the sheep. He fucked his niece and all their sheep. Yeah, that, that's this sucks. They call each other retards. They call each yeah, straight up just say the R word. Say and they retards, start like bumping like, chests into Goldilocks, who's getting like pissed at them because they're harassing her, and like Stan or like Bodo grabs her breasts. Well, the idea is that if like <laughs> apparently Stan explains this that like you know if you want to get a match, you just gotta bump into someone backstage. Like Pokemon. That you gotta, it's like, you gotta match sure eyes that, with them. I don't know if that uh, if that meta commentary by stand up is brilliant or stupid. So, uh, they, they go, go up, up to they fight. Go up, they go up to fight Ian Harrison because he's still yeah, blocking up, security. Up. They and pump like, up against Ian Harrison and he's like, "What you want? What are you what are you doing here?" And, and then they like comically yeah. sneak up and and stand up or like bowed up punches him bowed up, but yeah. What if, like, just sneak attacks him while comically sneaking like he's in a, like, a children's cartoon? And he's like, what are you doing, mate? Stop up, what are you doing? What's the matter with you? Are you stupid? You're stupid. And it's just, and it's just like, okay, now he's this like, is them, our next match. He's like, words, and they, I guess they have a match now. Yes, it's Bo Dub versus some big muscle head guy from the back. Yes, they make, uh, they they make, make Borash say that. They make Borash, who's desperately trying to get the blonde out of his hair, to say that. At least, at least Borash didn't get sexually harassed by another woman. Yeah, right? so Bodup starts to wrestle Ian Harrison. And Stand Up sits next to Don West again. To on commentary. Get his headphones on commentary. And now, he just like slurringly describes Ian Harrison as the crocodile hunter and just starts going crikey 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 like that I have, I have written on my notes did I do something in a past life to deserve this this is getting worse <laughs> this is bad oh, like fuck, actually man. bad like Bo Dub isn't great in the ring. Like he's serviceable at best. I feel like Ian Harrison kind of sucks. Yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> and it's the, the, so like one of them grabs the wood to hit Ian Harrison with it, and then Ian yeah, Harrison they brought like some boards or something. Ian Harrison just breaks the board over his knee. 
Well, because like they go for the breakup, but Stan ends up running in late, so like he just kicks out, and then he hits him with the board. And I, like this wood broke in like part into like fucking pieces. So I wrote down, "You try to hit me with fucking balsa." <laughs> Bring me the teak or the cedar. I fucking just... balsa wood. This match is mercifully short and only like like under three minutes, but still, why? So yeah, this match sucked. Um, he, I remember stand up saying that Ian Harrison looks like a giant jar of play doh. Which, how the fuck does that work? <laughs> so Jeff Jarrett's in the back, and he goes to the security door that Ken Shamrock like barred off earlier, and he just takes the barring off. And when he goes in to talk to the security, just Ken Shamrock's in the locked room. <laughs> Because it has just two doors them. in it. And the security's just been standing there the whole time. So they could have just gone out the other way. Yeah. <sighs> God, TNA. So, Sabu versus Shamrock happens. In, in a ladder versus submission match. Yes, this is a match where you can win with ladder or submission. A.K.A. Ken Shamrock doesn't want to do any ladder spots. So he could win with submission, <laughs> I guess. Yes, it's it's a weird combination where it's like Ken Shamrock does submission and Sabu likes ladders and Sabu does ladder. Him. Sabu does ladder. Yeah. So we put the two concepts together. It doesn't like why? Why not just have one or the other, or just have a cage match or something? So but while they're doing their entrances, there's this montage of their la like the last match Sabu had last week against Malice. Yeah, the match, Malice match, yeah. And it's just a montage of people going, oh, 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 oh. But oh, I yeah, want to point oh. out that this title match is brought to you by. Let's go. Oh no, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> like that, yeah. Yeah, they were going oh like that. Thanks, past Mega Fighter. So, all of security is quit, according to Mike Tanay. <laughs> they just quit. They all quit. I don't, think, I don't know if that's something you can do. Aren't you security for that arena? Like, do you work for TNA? Is that a thing? Sabu has an ICP armband on, and they start talking about how, like, next week, Bill Barron's decided that, uh, as a special security manager, to bring Ricky Steamboat back. Except, <laughs> they start saying that they're going to give Ricky Steamboat a gun. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Let's give him a gun. I Let's give him one Ed of Ferrara. James Storm's guns. I remember Ed Ferrara was like talking shit about someone or talking tough. And I just think, really, Ed Ferrara, you're the guy who backed out after Cornette slapped you once. Yeah. Don't try to act like you're a fucking big man. And that's Jim Cornette. <laughs> that's Jim Cornette. So just it's this match doesn't matter. Nothing really important happens. The lights go out. The wrong theme plays, and then the lights come on, and Malice runs into the ring <laughs> like he's fucking late. <laughs> yeah, he's late, runs into the ring, and goes up and climbs the ladder and takes the belt. And that's just it. Match is no contest. Match is no contest, and Malice has stolen the championship, which doesn't mean he's entitled to it. So that's not how this fucking it, works. I, I think at one point... uh uh, Ken Shamrock threw Sabu at the strippers. Strippers. Threw him at the cage. So <clears throat> there was also the sign, which will not win sign of the week. I think I already know what's going to win. Where it said, like, Lindsay O'Brien gives fellatio for crack. What the fuck? <laughs> these, these, <laughs> man, Todd Frasher and Lindsay O'Brien must, must have had to have moved out after these shows. Why are they just, why is everyone so, like, mean and aggressive? <laughs> With signs. I swear to God, someone would have a sign calling someone the F word. Like, just... I swear. At this no, that's, fucking not, point, no, that's the WWE with gold dust. Oh, along yeah. With the, along with what he did to that guy's dad. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> there was also a point where, like, they were supposed to be, like, sat, like sat, Ken Shamrock sat on the table, and then, like, he moves off the table and Sabu dives at him. We don't see Shamrock actually move. It just so it just looked to me like Sabu dove onto a table. <laughs> Fuck you, table. But yeah, we're out of time. We're this out of time. show 
This show is fucking insane. I don't... It, it felt like a fever dream, and, like, I, I took a gummy and drank an energy drink before I watched... Before I saw this, and it sort of started fucking with me a little bit, and it honestly felt like I was... <laughs> I was going out of my fucking mind. The thing is, I was sober entirely. I have no gummy or energy drink in me. Yes. But all of this was happening. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, there was some good stuff early on with, like, Amazing Red, Low Key, Hot Shots. It just, started, it just started going horribly wrong at some point. It fell apart. Yeah. Basically. So, like, just... This wasn't a good episode. It was fucking weird. That's all. It was fucking weird. Let's get uh, let's get on to awards. Yeah. So who first is, off is who's um, the MVP? I feel like honestly, while it would have gone to AJ the any other week, I'm gonna give it to Jerry Lynn just for fucking bleeding like buckets for us. Yeah, he really didn't need to do that, and I I mean seriously, he really didn't need to fucking do that. He was he didn't have to bleed that much for just a like an outside dive spot. Like what the fuck? <laughs> oh yeah, good thing to note from the Monty Brown Elix Skipper match before I forget. Uh Elix Skipper didn't do the overdrive this nope. week. So good job. He's learned. He, he's learned. Who gets underrated? <laughs> Who gets underrated is a great question. The thing I noticed about the flying Elvises is I think Jorge Estrada is the only guy who gives a shit about the gimmick. I feel like Jimmy Yang needs to commit more. He was committed early on, but it doesn't feel like he's been super into it. Yeah. Okay, so figuring out underrated. We got, like, Amazing Red vs. Loki. That eh, was fine. Yeah. Hot Shots vs. Hair Storm. Apollo does not, because I feel like that match I don't really care about him better. enough. I don't care about him enough to give him an award. His His theme's over with us, but not him. He's not. And it sucks because I feel like he's not a bad wrestler. No, absolutely not. He's fine. I feel like maybe give it to Elix Skipper. I don't know. Uh, fuck it. I'll give it to Elix Skipper. I don't care. Yeah. Fuck it. Uh, why segment? Um. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's a hard one. <laughs> oh, um. I'll see what your why is. I feel like Ron Killings versus Monty Brown might be. Sure. You know, just... I'm putting this down as this segment written by a white man. Vince Russo. Vince Russo has written this scene. <laughs> Sign of the week. I'm, I'm going to go with the weird one that you spotted very early. Which is, my sperm is greater than your sperm. <laughs> yes, my sperm count is <laughs> greater than your sperm count. Oh my god, it was his sperm count. Okay. Yes. <laughs> because I'm just like, what the fuck kind of shit is this? Here's my well, sperm you're... count's one. Just one big sperm. It's fucking like a no, fish. No, your sperm count is one sperm. I have so many sperms. I have just millions. Sper sperm. My sperm is like two sperm swimming in a figure eight sideways. Infinite sperm. Infinite sperm. <clears throat> Why are we doing uh... this? <laughs> But there was a, I can't even put it down at 2000s alert because TNA is so insulated. Yeah. They've even dropped the NASCAR guys. Let's see Alan Iverson talking. being arrested. I don't know. 2000s alert. Alan Iverson. Yeah. Yeah. He he was the explanation for why they banned hip they banned hip hop clothing in the NBA, even though they really didn't need to do that. Honestly, it's just who the fuck cares. Oh no, they're wearing chains. That's going to affect their basketball. I don't I, I just, like, I don't know. Like, I guess maybe if you feel like watching this show, watch the tag title match. And yeah. uh, Diamond Diamond and Johnny Swinger versus Monty Brown and Luke Skipper. I feel yeah, like those you are good. Rest. Fuck the segment after that. That was lame. Um, that was dumb. I think we're done. I feel like we are done. Um... This is probably going to be our shortest episode yet. God knows. Actually, it's a little bit longer than another episode we did, but whatever. Huh. Oh, it, it went by fast somehow. Yeah, a little bit. It just, it felt like so much happened, but it wasn't anything of substance. It wasn't substantive enough. So we are available on pretty much anywhere you can get a stream you can, or anywhere you can get a podcast pretty much. 
Unless you're like one of those weird people who listen to it on SoundCloud or something, like podcasts on those. No. Yeah, we're on iTunes, we're on Spotify, we're on Chromecast or whatever, Google Chrome Podcasts. Google Podcast Chrome. <laughs> Google Podcast Chrome. We're on YouTube. Yes, we're on YouTube and Twitter. And we, we got, have our own website. We got WrestleBoys at or WrestleBoysPod.wordpress.com. WordPress.com. Mega Fighters working on NXT Season 1 rebooking. Or Rassel Booking. You can yeah. find other articles on there as well. I'll try to make a top 10 later. <laughs> uh, we are Twitter at Rassel Boys, W R A S S L E B O Y S. Yes. I spelled it right this time. Yay. We did. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that about does it. And what we always say at the end of these episodes. Now, you see here, I'm going to win this match. <laughs> <laughs> Be the best wrestler in the whole book.